Welcome to Mrs. Gray's Geometry Videos. Today we are going to take a look at geometry in the coordinate plane. We're going to look at previous formulas that we've already learned and apply them to the coordinate plane to basically fill in the blanks and answer some questions. We're going to look at three different examples. Now on the first example, we are given some clues. And what we want to do is take a look at these clues and then give the possible coordinates of the third vertex of a triangle. So the clues that we have, we know that we have a right triangle, we have legs with um, measurements of seven and four units, and that one vertex has to fall on the coordinate zero, zero, and the other one on zero, seven. So what I've done to help me visualize this, I have drawn exactly what they've given me. So I've taken these clues. I have a right triangle, with a leg of a measurement of four and one of seven. And now what I'm going to do is I am just going to transfer this over to here and place it on the coordinate plane with a vertex at zero, seven and zero, zero. So that's what I've done right here. And hopefully you can just tell by looking at this, we've already um, figured out where one of our vertices could fall. So this third vertex could be on four, seven. Now I want you to think about it. Could we twist or turn this triangle in any way so that two of the vertices still lie on these coordinates, but we have another possible vertex? So think about it. So hopefully you guys can see that if we take this triangle and we just flip it, we still have two vertices that lie on these uh, coordinates right here, but we have another possible third vertex, and it could fall on four, zero. So that's another possible coordinate. Now think about it. Is there any way that we can turn this triangle or flip it so that it still has two of its vertices here? So hopefully you guys are thinking about it. You can visualize where I'm going with this. So if I were to take this and just flip it to the other side, I now have another possible uh, vertex. This one I actually have up here, but it would be negative 4, 7. So that is a third possibility. Now think about it. Is there another way that I could flip this or turn this? So again, two of the vertices are stationary. They lie here. We could take this and flip it one more time, and we still have two of the vertices that are on these coordinates that they told us that they have to stay on, but we have another possible vertex, and this one is negative four, zero. So that would give us four possibilities of uh, coordinates for the third vertex. Now for the next example, we are given a parallelogram on the coordinate plane. And we know three of the vertices, those are in blue. And we want to find the coordinates of J. So we're going to take the clues from the coordinate plane to help us fill in the blank here. Now if you look, we have this coordinate for H is A0. So that means that this A is our X coordinate that from here to here, has a measurement of A. But in order to find the x-coordinate of J, we also need this distance from here to here. But if you look, we have a clue up here. This x-coordinate for L is B. So that means from here to here on the x-axis, this has a distance of B. Now this distance is, this, is the same distance here. So to help you visualize this, I'm just going to move this right here. Remember that this is a measurement of B. So basically, and if we take A and then we add B, that gives us the X coordinate for J. So our coordinates for J are A plus B for the X and then C for the Y, because they tell us here that our Y value is C, so that means that every coordinate along this line is going to have a Y value of C. Now the third example is going to be the most challenging. We're going to use what we have been 
using all semester, and that's the midpoint formula. The only difference is that we are going to use the variables in the midpoint formula instead of numbers. So what we are given is that PQ is the mid-segment of this triangle. And remember, if it's the mid-segment, that means that we are taking the midpoint of this line right here, and then we're connecting it to the midpoint of this line right here, and that gives us the mid-segment. And we want to find the coordinates of P and Q. And we are going to use the midpoint formula to help us, because again, in order to find the mid-segment, we had to connect this midpoint to this midpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clues that I have here, I know that N has an XY coordinate of AB and M has an XY coordinate of Z0 and I'm just going to plug those into the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula is X1 plus X2 over 2. So here's my X1, here is my X2. So for my X1 plus X2, it would just be A plus C divided by 2 and then for the Y value, I'm just taking y1 plus y2 over 2, which would be b plus 0 over 2. And of course, I don't need to put this 0 here. So my q coordinate would be a plus c over 2 and b over 2. Now I want to find my b coordinate. And again, I'm just going to use the midpoint formula because that's part of the definition of the mid-segment. So I'm just going to take this x1 plus this x2, which would be a plus 0 over 2, and then I'm going to take this y1 plus this y2 over 2, which would be b plus 0 over 2, and then of course I can simplify these. I do not need to show the zeros. So just taking out the zeros, I would end up with a over 2 and b over 2. So this is my q coordinate and this is my P coordinate. It's just a little bit different because I don't see any numbers. I have variables instead. So that's what make this, makes this a little bit tricky, but I know you guys can do it. I'll see you soon.